Um, he has had more than 30 years experience as a leader in cultural area, including being co-founder Art Rotterdam, director of the Zuderzin Museum, Rembrandt House Museum, Manarat Al Sandia, Abu Dhabi, and for the last six year National Maritime Museum in Amsterdam. Always focus on the purpose of a cultural identity. A museum is much more than a building and collection. The reach out of an institution can be endless with the right proposition. Water connects people. And if I'm not wrong, this is the mission of the Maritime Museum. Please welcome Michael Husser. He will talk about becoming an eco-positive National Maritime Museum by 2030. Welcome. It's all about purpose. That's, thank you for the introduction. Um, hello, friends and colleagues. I have to get used to this machine as well. Um, and let's see how it works. It's the green, I think. Eh? Wow. Which color is it? If you get used to the system, the system works. Oh, this one. Ah, OK. Great. Yes, now the ocean is moving. Uh, dear friends and colleagues, it's a great pleasure to be here today at the International Congress of Maritime Museums. The National Maritime Museum in Amsterdam, of which I'm the director, has been associated with this Congress for many, many years. And a story I'd like to share with you today is, all, is about the future for our kind of heritage institutions. What are the challenges we face as we try to remain relevant? We heard it many times before to maintain our connection with our audience. And what do we mean when we talk about a sustainable museum? At the National Maritime Museum, we believe that a new and a different period is beginning and that we need a new approach and a new attitude. And to give this more direction and focus, we have to look at our institutions, how they started and how they developed. And many of our institutions date back to the 19th century and early 20th century. They were all started by people who feared that in this industrial development would cost us our heritage and all its amazing history. That's the best background of also our museum. It was founded in, um, in 1916 by a group of private collectors afraid that Dutch maritime culture would disappear as steam power took over from sail. In 1973, the museum moved to this building, um, uh, Sland Zeemagazijn, where it now holds one of the world's leading collections and libraries and ranks amongst country states uh, museum. This is this museum nowadays. And as many as you know, our home is a historical monument was built in 1652 on a site that once belonged to the Dutch Navy, the Admir Admiralty. And in 2012, after a major renovation, the museum reopened. And in 2016, under new Dutch heritage law, we extended our responsibility for the collection, education, and public uh, relations to include upkeep the building and two storage locations. Taking on these new responsibilities enables us to expand our ambitions for sustainability and to embrace the whole structure, our building, our collection, our program, and above all, our public. These new responsibilities usher us also in a new phase. And as a museum, we have to set ourselves the goal to become eco-positive in 2030. And let me try and explain what we mean by that. At the present, when we talk about sustainability, we emphasize a lot about carbon dioxide emissions, but this only covers a fraction of our impact 
on the environment. Our ambition goes further. That's why we call it eco-positive. Our museum will be eco-positive when a visit to the museum has a positive constructive impact as opposed to a destructive impact. But put it more simply, when visitors contribute to creating a better world. First about the building and how we use it. What kind of challenges do we have with the building um, by toughening up our sustainability demands? And at the moment, we, we, we focusing on various practical levels. Our heat and cold storage systems enable us to reduce our gas dependence by 90%. And at the same time, the energy we use is green. LED lighting, 24-7 monitoring, and ozone water purifiers reduce our water use by massive 80%. And our new highly efficient, uh, efficient uh, climate and light control system enable us to monitor the collection and regulate the flow of heat and air to a constant level. Together with uh, 13 other cultural institutions in Amsterdam, we dispose uh, the waste by water transport. And to give you an example, that means seven garbage trucks fewer driving around the city of Amsterdam each week. Um, we also achieved impressive results by refocusing our activities to achieve our sustainable, sustainability targets. 30 less trash, 97% lower carbon dioxide emissions, 94% less water usage, and 59% fewer animal products. And as a museum, we can also influence our, how people visit us. Yeah, we're currently working with a sustainable link between the central station and the museum by a hydrogen-powered boat. But this, these examples aren't meant to, to give us a self a boost or cheer ourselves on our shores. That's not the point. Our world is full of challenges and issues, and this has a huge impact on the maritime world. War is affecting grain supplies, which affects our food supply, the conflict in Ukraine, globalization, Black Lives Matter, and the climate uh, crisis. All this have created a stressful environment in our cultural inst institutions, our public, but also our staff, everyone in the museum world worries. And the question we should be asking is this. As a museum, can we or should we provide context and delve further into these issues? And at the National Maritime Museum, we, meet, we really believe that we have to meet these challenges head on. And this has consequences for our collection and its consequences for our program. And it doesn't mean that we have to turn our collection upside down, but it does mean that we have to present exhibitions in a different way. And we should be collecting stories as well as objects. And in recent years, we have become increasingly conscious of the need to present our collection and its contacts in a more contemporary perspective. For example, uh, the last exhibition of Willem van der Velde, we created a link to the present by showing the artists as war correspondents, inviting uh, a contemporary artist uh, to show in a museum on historical themes. And uh, a few years ago, you see the next picture, we bought a, a, a Femi Noir uh, statue in reverence to today's Black Lives Matter movement. Besides connecting with the modern world, institutions like ours also have to take a closer look at how we relate to our public, to the researchers, and to other external staff on how we can develop, develop further as an institution. In our MS Oranje project, we focused on a luxury ocean liner, which was built in 1938 and later repatriated uh, re Patriated people returning from the former Dutch colony on the East Indies. We asked people who had sailed on the vessel to tell us about their connection with the ship and to bring an object to illustrate their memories. This stimulated so many conversations with our public and our audience in the museum, and we were able to collect around 100 new stories around uh, this ship. 
and about uh, the relationship with the with the ship. And we used this story to put it on an online uh, story catcher tool accompanying the show, enabling visitors to participate and add their stories, enrich and redirect the museum collection. We also invite various groups to reflect on controversial themes that affect the museum. And one result is an ongoing collaboration you see here with Jennifer Tosh's Black Heritage Tours on the theme of slavery. And I show you a short movie. I hope there's sound. If not, I'm continuing. What? Oh, I have to go back. Okay, I will continue. Another example is the story of Amsterdam's harbor. Uh, while we were setting up the exhibition, we, we really realized that there was a big gap in the story and we have let it very little information to fill this gap. This was the story of the guest workers. The tens of thousands of people brought in the Netherlands in the 1960s. They came from Italy, Spain, Morocco, Turkey, Yugoslavia, and Suriname. And many worked in Amsterdam's harbor. And later, the family re uh, reunification policy allowed his workers to bring their families over, and many settled in Amsterdam. And today, we rarely see these people in the museum. And this was an opportunity to reach out and get them involved. We currently working with an external staffer connected with this community to collect interviews and preserve this, uh, the, their stories. And our goal is to establish a link with them, with the museum, and to make them our museum a place where the story is told and heard. And these efforts are all about contacting groups of people who are difficult to connect with and getting them enthusiastic. And I can tell you, actually, is working. People are coming. And by sharing their stories on our online site and on our platforms, such maybe as Spotify, we can expand our reach. And these online tools, like Spotify, may someday, someday become the main media for our history. And to implement these activities properly, the museum has to take a more active role in commissioning to document tomorrow's oral history in photos and audio recorders, the institution has to manage effective, effectively. It's crucial that these stories also are properly verified and validated. From reactive to proactive. And at the present, uh, the museum is working on a new TV, uh, TV production entitled Food for Thought, in which Kadir van Lohaus, the same photographer of the, the exhibition, the pop-up exhibition there, explore the Dutch role as a food exporting country and takes a critical look at the massive food transport industry around the world. To give you an idea, the Netherlands is the second exporter of food in the world after the United States. This enables the museum to actively participate in setting the agenda for today's uh, topical and political issues. The previous production, Rising Tide, is curiously currently traveling around the world and was recently shown here, you can see, in the Museum of the City of New York. And now you can see here in the, on the back. And we have also an open door, uh, open air exhibition. Uh, and a newly developed toolkit ensures that this involves less transport and that the show can travel cheaper and further, increasing its impact while reducing its carbon footprint. Through all these activities, we hope to make an impact on our audience, thinking and to maintain a connection with people's experience and the concerts in their today's world. But above all, we want our museum 
to be a place where people feel like they own the museum and they want to contribute. A home port, a museum for you. And our goal is that Heritage Museum can play a meaningful role in the transition phase we are all currently experiencing. It means that we have to move away from our role as an institution of preservation of endurged heritage and become a museum that produces and asks questions of its audience and encourages people to contribute in a rapidly changing society. And this approach can transform our relevance as a heritage institution, giving a far broader scope because it's heritage institutions which are perfectly positioned to examine today's issue in great depth and context. And to do this together with the public and to place this in a proper perspective. How do you measure? We, we put it very simple. We, we said, well, we, we want to minimize the harmful impact of all everything we do. We want to inspire the public to participate uh, this sustainability, and we want to be an example for other museums. And at the end, we believe that all these activities will enable us to achieve our goal of becoming an eco-positive museum in 2030. Then, in 2030, every visitor to our museum and every online user will contribute, whether consciously or not, to sustainable society. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Nobody? Well, I think we, we saw many. Oh, sorry. Question. Can we have the mic? Here we go. Marika? Okay, I'll be very brief, but this question is actually for all three of you, uh, Marika Hedin from Sweden. And um, uh, I think that this, in some ways, Peter, this addresses what you, your challenge uh, from this morning, that all three museums are approaching in their own way. But I have a very concrete question, and that is um, through uh, these new themes that all three museums in various ways are approaching, uh, do you feel that the way you manufacture exhibitions and design them and do programming has changed? Uh, because there's much more scientific explanation in what you're doing now. Uh, and so does this change the tone uh, of the museum? So any one of you can answer. Thanks. Um, anyone want to take that? Richard, Dan? I got Dan first. Yeah. I, would, I would just say that undoubtedly it does. Um, and to what extent is it more engaging or engaging in a different way um, is something I think we really need to be studying very carefully uh, because people come to certain museums for certain kinds of experiences and sometimes they don't, I mean, this is my personal anecdotal response to it, they don't understand why they love something and that's great. You know, we don't have to say this is the information delivery. I thought the word cloud with the information word there was interesting because that's not where we're going per se. We're walking out with a big emotional response to something that might be completely inchoate. Um, and at the same time, uh, internally, we're changing the, our processes to the extent that we don't fill a dumpster every time we change an exhibition out. Um, I, I may or may not have been part of your question, but um, that's a hard change as well, which changes the the visuals of the experience. Uh, you might walk in and see the same walls you did in the last uh, exhibition. So at a very basic level, there is that. While at the same time, every museum is ratcheting up its digital uh, component, both in the galleries and uh, outside. Uh, that is also, I think, uh, has very varying uh, responses from the public. Some people love it, some people don't. Um, I noticed recently in an exhibition that we installed that had what I thought was a spectacularly fascinating LED wall uh, that I just, I mean, I, I, there were 100 paintings there, but I just stared at the wall. If I walked anybody through that show who was 80 years old plus, they, it was like they didn't see it. They just kept on walking. Right? And so that's something we at least have to recognize, you know, and not pass judgment on. Sorry. 
Um, I, I think um, my, my take is that um, the staff and it, people working in museums have got to be a lot more scientifically literate. Um, there's a lot of historians here, so I throw that challenge out. I think also that um, museums have to look outside the window. It, it's all about partnerships with um, specialised organisations, understanding what the research, what the data is saying, and then coming up with a, a unique uh, museum communication uh, response. But um, I, have I have found the subject and of communicating science uh, quite challenging, and I'm sure I'm not alone, and uh, we need all the help we can get, but I'm sure if, um, our colleague will say something else. <laughs> no, uh, a few things. Um, if we talk about co-ownership as a museum, or we ask people to to fill in our black holes, let's say it that way. There's a very thin line to if it's a museum of yourself and a museum I can take over. Um, and that's that's a thin line. I don't know if you can imagine what I'm feeling, but if you, especially when you talk with activists, it's very difficult to, and we heard it yesterday as well, what's the position in a museum? But I think the position in a museum, if you can make the context and the, 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 in, in an open atmosphere and to, to realize all the debates and to be a clubhouse of certain groups, you reach out can be so great and so wonderful. And of course there will be rough debates and of course there will be fights and uh, disputes, everything. But you need to do this in order to go to the next level. So don't be afraid, as a museum. Any other questions? Carol here. Thank you, Kim. Um, you've all um, alluded to the fact that what you're trying to do with these programs is to create positive action around environmental change through public education. Could I, I, I think it's a question for all of you. I mean, how do you know that you've actually achieved that? How do you know that as a result of actually seeing your exhibitions or participating in these programs that you're, the public who view them go and do something different, think something different, um, try something different than they have before? Maybe, maybe you can come. On on the stage, so Kim yeah, doesn't have We to. have this stage. <laughs> <laughs> and a table and some microphones, it might be better. Um, may I start? We believe the museum is not only a building and, and visitors. The museum stands for a brand. That's why we put uh, money into TV programs. That's why we believe that uh, Spotify is, is a very good platform to give all these uh, stories a uh, platform. A museum is much more. Uh, and I, I was very inspired by the speech this morning about uh, we think very small. So think about cooperation. Uh, the thing that we have an exhibition which travel all over the world makes the impact much bigger than we ever thought. So uh, that's also a little bit of awareness for ourselves. Um, I think museums could always improve the way they survey their visitors. I think we're pretty, pretty rubbish. But I think in terms of success, um, I think it's when uh, community organisations, Greenpeace, scientific organisations come to the museum and want to partner. When people are coming to us and saying, um, we want to be with you, we want to use, uh, work together, use your institution um, as, a, um, as a, a public forum, I think that's when we're really hitting the mark, that we're part of a broader debate and we're a safe place for uh, discussion. And it's very, it's always been very thrilling for me to, to work with activist groups and organisations and scientists and using the museum as a platform and it's very much like what Michael was saying. I think that's the mark of success. When the phone's not ringing, I think you've got a problem. <laughs> well, I very much appreciate that question coming from a museum consultant who's very nuts and bolts and wants data and I do as well. Um, our visitor evaluation was a um, victim of COVID, and so these particular projects 
uh, we can't answer that specific question. Even if we had that evaluation, I don't know whether it would be the, the f in a format that would satisfy me personally, uh, because I know that we've been very successful at reaching the converted, people who are already activated by the topic and really want to know how to do more and want a community, and that's the community of the museum, which is wonderful, but I really, first of all, don't want to alienate the larger community. I want to be inviting to them and convincing to them in whatever format possible. Um, and I'm not sure we're there, and I think that's a much more nuanced kind of approach, and we should be. We should get there. Peter, oh, I think. Okay, yeah, I think. Oh, Peter. Is this on? Uh, all, it's very encouraging to see these examples. I, I think it's, 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 it's wonderful. One thing that occurs to me, though, is that <clears throat> it's the, there's the word program. I, I, just, I just looked it up. What does program mean? And, and there are two, a set of related measures or activities with a particular long-term aim. That's a good one. The other one is a series of coded software instructions to control the operation of a computer or other machine. Other machine, and program in the past to me has always been the second. Not literally taken, but it's, it's an internal system. But program uh, as a, uh, a strategy to reach a particular long-term aim is different. And my argument was always, I want a program every day. I don't want any day pass without a program. And that meant that the education department, the curatorial department, the development office, uh, the maintenance people, all had to essentially combine themselves and accept that level of activity. And it, changed, it changes everything. Uh, and it says, well, and, it, and, it, and it's not measured by gate. It's not measured by ticket sales anymore. It's measured by an entirely different kind of engagement with the public. And what, what's lovely about, the, about outreach and, and, and web-based outreach is that it, it enables that in ways that we've never, we are, are yet to discover. I mean, many, many different ways to be discovered and how you can take the museum so far out of its, side, out of its shell, but uh, uh, place it uh, as a constant stream of messaging. Uh, and, and, and so what, what each of you is doing seems to me is great steps in, 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 the, right, in the right direction, sort of. I think we're going to have to call that a wrap. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, we have a... Okay, it's a few notes about lunch.